Whew, boy, it has been quite some time, let me tell you. And I know, I know, I'm a little bit late on this, but hey, you have to wait till the NBA season was over. Um, and then some news, you know, came out, died down, and everything like that. So yeah, a lot of things have happened over the past three or four weeks, to be completely honest with you. The coaching changes in college basketball, UConn dominating the NCAA tournament, you know, beating Purdue in the national championship and everything like that. You know, you know, you, you got the uh you got the women's tournament, you know, South Carolina going unbeaten, but the main story is Caitlin Clark probably going to the Indiana Fever with the WNBA draft being tomorrow night. You know, there's that. Now the NBA playoffs are set in stone. So um, I'm going to talk about the women's game first because a lot of people, you know, were tuned in, you know, nearly 19 million for the national championship for the game that honestly it was going to go South Carolina's way anyway. Um, again, if you did not watch, if you did not watch the South Carolina team this year, I don't know what you were thinking. There was only like maybe like three or four games where the Gamecocks were, you know, at a disadvantage and you know they just they did their thing Camila Cardoso and you know and company just did their thing nobody really said anything so they just easily took care of business you know in the national championship you know once things started to go their way again Iowa was tough you know missed a few key players and everything like that but hey at the end of the day, you know, when you hold Caitlin Clark to like 10 to 28 shooting, you know, that and you, you, you have her start, you know, have a hot start, but then, you know, she dies down quickly after that hard start, you know, where I thought at one point she was going to score 50 points, but uh, yeah, did not happen. So South Carolina going unbeaten, nobody's really talking about it. Don Staley adds another championship. You know, to her impressive resume, and I mean, just man, who knows what next year will be like with this South Carolina team? You know, and I mean, again, the women's tournament is mostly chalk to like the Sweet Sixteen. So you know, the fact that like the sixteen best teams, you know, made it all the way to the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, there was some surprises, maybe like one or two, but ultimately. When, when your final four is a NC State team that, you know, it's really good. Iowa, UConn was itched to hell and back and have lots of players coming back for next year. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how this all goes down in the women's game, you know, as things pertain to, you know, what next year will be like. Because, again, it's going to be interesting. South Carolina is going to be ready to roll. UConn is bringing back Beckers and Edwards. You know, I was in a situation where it's like, um, yeah, no more CC. So what do we do now? Um, of course, there's other perennial powers like Texas, NC State, the rest of the ACC, just whatever, where these Pac-12 teams, you know, run off to, you know, the Big Ten and the ACC and how they're going to you know, managing their new conferences at homes in the Big 12 as well. So there's that. And then, you know, the WNBA draft, I get it. You know, very quickly, much uh, much quicker turnaround than one would think. But, hey, it happens. It happens. It really does happen. So um, it's going to be one interesting draft to say the least and those you know again the big story is getting Clark but there's others out there as well and of course you know most WNBA players are returning from Europe for their yearly Europe you know dominate the European scene they come back play WNBA ball or alternatively they're they played athletes unlimited and you know did their thing now they're getting ready for training camp and preseason into the regular season which starts in less in yeah in about a month so 
things just move so quickly in the women's game, and I cannot wait to be a part of it this year. I'm going to be definitely watching more WNBA this year. Definitely going to be talking about it, so there's going to be some things for me to say about it this year. Um, we'll see how far it goes. All right. Um, the men's side, honestly, you know, again, aside from UConn, you know, just completely blitzing everybody they faced. NC State was a big surprise. Clemson was a big surprise. You know, Alabama was really, really close, but ultimately no cigar. Um, again, Purdue, Purdue did what they needed to do. Unfortunately, it still resulted in a national championship. You know, you know, Zach Eady did his thing, you know, dominating. And I know people were like, oh, foul merchant, uh, dude. Blah, blah, blah. No, he, he, this Purdue team was legit. Houston, if they hadn't have lost, you know, she to entry, I think, you know, I think this, I think that his team would have gone all the way. But again, a lot of us, a lot of us expected that UConn would go back to back. And they did just that with, with Klinge, Carabat, Spencer, just the whole team that Danny Hurley built. They went back to back with ease, to be completely honest with you. So there's that in a nutshell. So uh, I know I'm a little bit late in talking about it, but again, you shouldn't have national championships on Monday nights. And I know we get to the whole, well, the national championship should not be on a Monday night, you know. And the Women's National Championship should be at 3 o'clock on a Sunday. But blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter now. The games are over. <sighs> and now we get to focus on the offseason with, you know, with John Calipari going to Arkansas that basically caused a ripple effect in which Mark Pope is now, you know, Kentucky's head coach. And then Scott Drew said, no, I'm staying at Baylor. Everybody else said, no, I'm staying where I'm staying at. Uh, and then, of course, the portal, you know, like Robbie Abila is now gone somewhere. I forgot where, but I know Texas picked up another Indiana State guy because Indiana State's coach went off somewhere. I forgot where. But, yeah, crazy things are happening in college basketball. Cannot wait to, you know, really dive deep into those when we come back to talking about college basketball in November. As for the NBA, well, playoffs are set. You see the matchups are just interesting, 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 interesting. The playing games, um, the 9-10 games, first off, Chicago, Atlanta, really, honestly, both those teams should be here. But, again, it is what it is. Um, playoff game in the West is far more interesting because these two teams went to seven games last year, Sacramento, and Golden State, but Golden State is a much weaker team, you know, than they were last year. Still very competitive with Jonathan Kuminga stepping up, but we'll see. Crazy how Sacramento fell all the way down to the nine seed. That's really crazy to me. Um, another team that I did not expect to fall the way they fell was the New Orleans Pelicans. I thought they would, you know, have that six seed locked tight, but ultimately. They faltered in the last couple of days, and now they're playing the Lakers. So, the Lakers make it two chances, you know, to right the ship with all these injuries going on with AD, LeBron, you know, winding down his time and everything like that. So, it's going to be really, really intriguing to see how all that plays out for the playing games. And, of course, Philadelphia also sliding down the seven, but of course, we know why Joel Embiid was hurt. There was some other injuries as well throughout the season for the 76ers, so they fell down to the seventh seed. And Miami still in it as well. So for the actual playoffs themselves, we don't know who will face the Boston Celtics just yet. We'll figure that out when we get to that point. But again, Boston, oh uh, yeah, very balanced team, and I've watched – a lot of Boston games, and I'm telling you, this is a team that if they do not completely fall apart, they will be going to the NBA Finals. I just don't see, you know, the Julius Randle injury. Again, I have no idea, you know, aside from Jalen Brunson, I have no idea how New York 
New York got all the way up to number two, but then again, Milwaukee faltered as well in the past week or two to where they fell down to number three, and they're going to face Indiana with, with Halley, you know, and company. Uh, that's going to be a real intriguing matchup. The 4 5 matchup, Bancaro versus those Cleveland Cavaliers. Again, Cleveland was definitely a team that was like at the very top but fell all the way down to four because they faltered at some point throughout the season, at least in the later portions anyway. So that's going to be really, really fun. Really, really fun stuff. From, from the East, this there's going to be some, definitely some fun matchups in here. There's definitely some good ones like the Philly, um, you know, Heat matchup. That's going to be real fun in a way, you know, with the way the Heat have been playing. They have been the most consistent team, but yet yeah, they're an eight seed. Um, the West is probably going to be the best bet where you get your bang for your buck for the NBA playoffs, as usual. <laughs> so, you know, with Oklahoma City lit by SGA, I mean, just absolute unit. And again, all three of the top three finish with the same record. Um, Minnesota with Cat, Anthony Edwards, and a little guy by the name of Rudy Gobert, you know, just an absolute unit of a team, really good team right there. Um, of course, the defending champs, they're number two. Basically, all the pieces are back and everything like that. And Joe and Jokic, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's he's, he's definitely going to take this Denver team far. Um, I still think. You know, the matchup, the matchup we're looking for here is a Denver Boston matchup. That's what I'm still thinking. But don't be surprised if you see Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks go pretty far. You know, they're facing the LA Clippers, which is a really good team in their own right. And again, I mean, the West is going to be an absolute bloodbath. I have no idea why Phoenix is the sixth seed, but whatever, because uh, they've been pretty inconsistent all year long. But they somehow are the six, you know. Um, man, again, the West is going to be an absolute gauntlet this year. And the East, I, I genuinely can't tell, you know, if somebody's going to stop Boston. But ultimately, there there might be somebody who can. But it's just like you know the inconsistencies between Doc Rivers's. Milwaukee Bucks, you know, New York Knicks, who cannot face Boston and save their lives. Um, Cleveland's there, but do they have enough firepower? Can they keep, you know, them bigs, you know, of Mobley and Allen in rotation? You know, can they keep those two in rotation long enough where it's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this is a team that can counter, you know. So there's definitely a counter for Boston. It's just who's going to make that first step? And the West, again, like I said, absolute bloodbath. Going to be chaotic. Don't be surprised if our Western Conference Finals matchup is like Denver Dallas or something like that. It, it could be it could be a combination of like OKC, yeah, you know, very threatening team, Minnesota, Denver, Dallas, LA Clippers, uh, like those five teams alone, like that. That could counter, you know, the one on on the Boston side, you know, like it, those, like that. Those are just money matchups right there, you know, for the NBA Finals. But ultimately, I still think it will be Boston Denver coming out, you know, uh, from the East West respectively. So if you have a different, you know, NBA Finals prediction, just sound off for me. Um, we'll talk. The indoor football scene tomorrow because there's a lot to talk about there. I'm not prepared to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. I feel refreshed, so getting ready for the grind of another week. So, till tomorrow night, I'll see you all very, very soon to just kind of just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride that is the indoor football scene. Take care, everybody. Have a good night, and I'll see you Monday night.